Far from business as usual in Boston, but the Red Sox got it done for one of their biggest stars, making an official Wednesday. Devers signed, sealed, delivered to the tune of 11 years, 331 mil. After trading Mookie Betts in 2020 to the Dodgers and letting Xander Bogarts leave for San Diego, Boston finally gets in the game and keeps Devers, but it cost him some serious bank. So it's a 10-year extension, uh, 313.5 mil, largest contracts among third basemen, and these guys are all pretty smooth. I mean, obviously you know about A-Rod from uh, back in the day. Machado, Arenado, and Anthony Rendon would love to see a Rendon see if he's healthy this year uh, that's I'm sure Angels fans are, are hoping for that as well but uh, hey uh, Devers is the man in Boston let's check in with Chief Baseball Officer Heim Bloom. Um, every organization dreams of developing star players Rafael Devers is a star he's not just a star he's our star it's a wonderful thing to retain a homegrown player who loves Boston and Boston and Red Sox Nation loves back. Happy to be here today. Um, thank you to Red Sox Nation, uh, who adopted me since I was 16, and um, have have also been a big help in getting me to this point. This is the organization that has given me everything, um, so that was a factor. Um, but also, free agency isn't easy, and it's a tough process, and I just didn't want to have to go through that. I just want to be the same guy that I've always been, someone who has fun, someone who um, enjoys the game, who's, a, who's approachable. I love what I do. Um, I'm happy to play here, and um, that, that hunger will, won't subside. It'll, it'll, it'll be maintained because I just love playing baseball, and I love doing it here. What a joy to watch. I mean, this guy's just 26 years of age. He's a baby. And look at his MLB rank since the 2019, and they are literally off the chain. I mean, in every offensive category that is uh, worthwhile, Devers is up there in the top 10, and in most of them the top three. So kudos to Heim Bloom and the Red Sox for locking up their third baseman, uh, Rafael Devers. Back inside Studio 3 with the Carlos and Mike. I am Fran. Those cheeks were rosy, man. I mean, he's showing those teeth. This guy is happy, and why not? Uh, 300, what, the 30 total mil, 331. This guy's always, Carlos, been a great hitter. Yeah, so consistent, and he's been always a, a great hitter ever since he was a kid, right. man. And the way he does it is so special, Mike. I mean, I mean I'm going to take you through some um, a video here just to show you because it is really particular, the way he stands at the plate. He actually stands wide open, but then when he strides, there's a placa there on the upper and in the more spots of the, of the zone. And then this one, still middle in, and he's able to go the other way with it. But this is how he does it. This is why this is so special. He stands open at the plate, right? He's open. This is the pull, the ball he pulled for a home run. So it stands open, but this is the thing. He's going to stride open. That's called stepping into the bucket, right? They used to tell us, don't do that. Placa that. That's the way he goes about his business when he pulls the baseball. It's open here. He's got clear uh, pathway to the baseball. And then going the other way, this pitch is not away. He's still stepping into the bucket slightly, slightly open. This pitch is middle in slightly, and he's still able to hit it out for a home run. He is such a great hitter. The angle he creates, he's able to let that ball travel so deep into the zone, taking advantage of the green monster. I mean, he is tailor-made for Boston. These pitches here, he's almost taken out of the catcher's mitt. Stands open, but he's going to stride open again, Mike. Watch. Look, striding open allows him to hit this baseball way deep in the zone. He's hitting it off his back leg, and I can prove it to you. Check this out. That's off his back knee. So he's out there just waiting for the ball to get as deep as possible. So he's going to hit for high average. He's going to hit a bunch of doubles off that monster. As you saw, he was first in extra base hits. 108, nine uh, Palacatas, but the extra base hits. All those doubles, Mike, off that monster. This guy's tailor-made for Fenway Park, and he's going to be there for a long time. Two things I noticed, Carlos, there. When you show his head, although he kind of has a big stride, his head stays very still, and that upper body is still coiled. Even yes. though he's maybe slightly open with the hips, that upper body is still cold, and when he releases, I mean, it, I think it, al it almost allows him to manipulate the baseball because that ball in or third, you can hit it with power to right center, to center. Not a lot of guys can hit it to left center. That, that's, a, that's a different 
you know, point of contact to be able to do that and still have power. He's he's a remarkable super, young super hitter. flat really through is. the zone, super flat through the zone. And those balls he pulls, he very rarely hooks a ball down the line. The, he keeps all those home runs fair. As a matter of fact, they might, they might actually spin the other <laughs> yeah, way. Right. Unbelievable. And we found out right away just what a great hitter Rafael Devers was when he took Chapman deep with 103 miles an Oof. hour, took it over the monster. You, you made really, I mean, a brilliant point. We worked together during the season about this guy because he gets knocked for his defense. And it really stuck with me. Offensively, he was so good in their system that they couldn't wait for the defense to catch up. We had to see this guy. They're like, we got to get this guy in. And we saw what he could do with the plate. So the defense wasn't quite there. He gets knocked for it. But you see some improvements. Absolutely. I think when we look at Rafael Devers, it's exactly that, friend. He's almost a product of his hitting prowess. You know, he breaks into the league at age 20. So what happens? You become now this defender under that microscope, under that spotlight of playing in Boston. And you see, that you do need time. You need time to understand the angles and the hops. And you see some balls, maybe he doesn't need to charge. You play certain balls into those in-between hops, and, and it, it, it carries a lot, of, a lot of weight on how you have to answer questions after a game, how you have to <laughs> prepare yourself. You know, here, he, these are just simple things where reps cure it. You know, we go into 2022, and this is what the, the, the arsenal that he has. I mean, this is, this, he makes this play look easy. You know, this is a guy that's out by a mile. Going to his, his, uh, his right, he's really improved. He has plenty of arm. You see now that he, on this play right here, he's showing that great angle, plays that ball into, you know, catching it barehanded and having time, understanding, you know, that internal clock. I think that's something that you really need to learn and it comes through reps. I never played third base, so I signed a professional contract. Mm. And I thought it took me a good two and a half years wow. just to understand the position. And I played the infield my whole life. Wow, yeah. so, so it is an adjustment. I can't imagine doing that at age 20 when you know you can hit, but they're always hammering you about your defense. So take a look at this. He was in 2020, this is OA outs above uh, average. He was minus 13. That's still below average. He turned himself into a pretty average short, I mean, third baseman. For me, that says two things, consistency and dependability. That 11 out increase is the largest increase among all third basemen mm. in Major League Baseball. Wow. Wow. You know, so this is a guy who the skill set is there. I think the fact that now he has a lot of reps under his belt, he understands his strength. You know, he has plenty arm. Maybe you can play off a little bit, play more in that 5-6 hole. You know, th those are things... There's not an infield instructor on the planet that can tell you from day one where you should play. That's a little bit of a learned behavior, and I think we're going to continue to see him be dependable, and, and I'd love to see to the point where he becomes above average because it's very satisfying when they kind of hammer you, hey, this is a weakness of yours, this is a weakness of yours, and you kind of turn it into a strength. So uh, he, he's a guy, he's coachable, he likes to work, and maybe he can take a lot of guys out to dinner now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No doubt That's about not going to be a problem. Last time uh, we were in Fort Myers, the Red Sox, 30 clubs in 30 days, Rafael Devers is on a backfield, and he was doing nothing but mm. taking hard grounders, working on his defense, and starting to pay it's off. off. So congratulations to uh, Mr. Devers.